At the Gray Fossil site, we have this really small bear, and it's a short-faced bear. So it's part of this group of bears that is almost completely extinct. The only living bear in this group is the spectacled bear of South America. And the one that we have at the Gray Fossil site is an incredibly small bear. It would have been about the size of a German Shepherd. The bear we have is Plyonarctos, and Plyonarctos is the genus of the bear. And again, these bears all had a relatively short face, and the bear would have been about the size of a wolf or a German Shepherd. Uh, how, do, how much material do we have of our bear? Mm -hmm. So the bear isn't one of the most common animals we have, but we actually have specimens from the site that are found at, at no other fossil localities. So we have partial skull material, and when we look across North America at Plyonarctos, what's really known is just the teeth. And so at this site we have a partial cranium like this, and we have a number of the teeth and a lower jaw. And already what we can tell is that the bear at the gray site is an entirely new species of bear. So when we look at the material from our site, and how it compares to other fossils that belong in the same genus, Plyonarctos. Ours is smaller, the teeth are more squat, not as elongated. Basically, they're a little bit younger than some of the Plyonarctos material that's been found out in Western North America, and more similar to material that's been found in Florida. So, if you look at material from some of these early sites out in Western North America, all they have are basically some tooth fragments, not even complete teeth in, in most cases. What we have is most of a skull. This is a black bear for comparison, but we have most of the skull of Pleonarctos, and we have, we have quite a bit of the dentition, or teeth, as well. And this actually represents, right here, uh, some of the teeth that we have from our Pleonarctos, and you can see where they, where they fit in the mouth, actually. So very complete, relatively young individual, a relatively old individual, at least two specimens, maybe three individuals. So our bear, if we look at other fossil sites, Pleonarctos shows up in North America, and you can say Pleonarctos, you can say Pleonarctos, we don't know exactly how the Latin uh, language would have pronounced it, but this bear tells us that our site dates to between around 7 million years ago or younger because they show up in North America around 7 million years ago at other fossil sites that have radiometric dating. That's where we get our upper age bracket for the fossil site. The site actually dates to between 7 and 4.5 million based on the fossil rhinos because rhinos go extinct in North America around 4.5 million years ago. So the little bear that we have, if, if you look at the teeth of any bear, really, their teeth, their dentition is omnivorous. They're really eating plants, they're eating animals, and beyond that is really guessing. And so we have this little omnivorous animal, a bear, and it's probably doing similar things like raccoons do in that they both eat plants and animals throughout their lifetime. As with any fossil animal or plant, you look at specific characteristics of the anatomy, the shapes, the bumps on the animal or the plant, and that help, those help you narrow down what animal you're actually looking at. And in the case of bears, they have uh, particular shapes to the teeth, and these shapes to the teeth uh, tell me that they're bear, and what specific kind of bear we have. Again, this is a black bear, which has a very specific dentition compared to a giant short-faced bear or Pleonarctos, uh, they're quite different. They're omnivorous teeth. So, one of the questions that I often get answered is, how does the little short-faced bear from the gray site relate to the giant short-faced bears of the Ice Age? Because this is a close relative of it. And it's basically an ancestor. So the little bear at Gray is an ancestor to the giant bears that lived here during the Ice Age. It would have been a much smaller kind of bear, not nearly as carnivorous as some of the larger relatives during the Ice Age. What we 
we have here is Arctotus. This is the giant short-faced bear of North America. This would be a descendant, a potential descendant of the little bear that we have at the gray site. And so, as you can see, they have this really shortened face, and that's where they get their name. They actually would have had really long legs as well in comparison, so they would have looked strange or unusual to us in comparison to any modern bears. The closest living relative of the giant short-faced bear is the spectacle bear, or Tremarctos ornatus, of South America. These guys go extinct at the end of the Ice Age, about 11 to 12,000 years ago. So they're completely gone. What we know about them too is that they were omnivores, but some of them had a really protein-rich diet, eating lots and lots of meat. If we look at one fossil site that we excavate, Saltville, Virginia, so we can, we can mention another locality, we actually have these giant bears from that site. And they were chowing down on mammoth carcasses at that site. And so it's a really neat paleobiological uh, question that they help answer in that what happens to these mammoth carcasses and who eats these? Well, we know that these guys were doing it. And so we have fossils of them from that site. And when we compare this bear to our little bear from the gray site, or even to the black bear, you know, here's a black bear for comparison, we can get a feel for the dramatic size differences. Again, the little bear from gray would have been about the size of this black bear, which is a young black bear, or a little smaller. The giant short-faced bear, again, this is an animal that lived throughout the Ice Age and became extremely large during this time. Uh, when we compare it in profile, we can see it has a really shortened face. Again, that's a name that gets applied to the entire group, the Tremarctine bears, that's a subfamily. And, and you can see this comparison a little bit when you hold up a black bear. Another thing that you can do is you can look at them sort of straight on and look at the size of the nasal passageway. And this tells a little bit of a story about being able to smell a carcass from a long ways away. This guy being able to do that from a much greater distance. And so, were these guys scavenging mega mammals? No question about it. We have evidence now that they were munching down on these carcasses. And once they would have gotten to these carcasses, you can also imagine they would probably do a pretty good job of defending those carcasses from other mammals. They were definitely the largest in the carnivore group that lived in North America during that time. But interestingly, they were not the largest of all the short-faced bears. So we have this very small one at the gray site, which is an ancestor, millions of years before this, represents one of the earliest. Then during the Ice Age in North America, we have this giant bear, when on all fours, would have been about five and a half feet at the shoulder. But in South America, we now know that we had an even bigger representative of giant short-faced bears, um, getting up to about 3,000 pounds in some cases. So just a monstrous animal.